Hello and welcome to WEF Weekly, week two of the Winter Equestrian Festival and again another feast of equestrian sport including the Key Flow Feeds Grand Prix this week as we head out onto the Derby Field for the very first time in 2024 and it's a packed week two and the streaming again is brought to you by Dodd Technologies, our thanks to them as well. Industry leaders providing creative design and technical support and supported too by US Equestrian and the USEF Network as well. Thank you to all of those. And so once again, we have a fantastic lineup of guests coming up for you this week to talk all manner of equestrian sport. We've been touching on hunters, on jumping, a little bit of everything here this week. And to introduce you to my guests, I'm delighted to say, uh, joining us this week, making a return this year, is Jacob Pope. Jacob, uh, it's been a big year since you were here last year. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. Looking forward to talking lots about that. Hannah Selleck joins us after another good run in the Grand Prix last week as well. Hannah, very warm welcome. Thank you. And Geoffrey Hessling makes his first appearance. Yeah, thank you for having me. Looking forward to this because you've, you've been rushing around all the rings and getting, getting you here and into action, yeah. which is great to see. So let's wrap up a little of uh, last <laughs> week to uh, see what happened there as well because there was lots going on from our leading riders to, of course, the uh, scores in our Hermes 150 series. How did that all look after last week's big competitions? Well, first, the leaderboard for the uh, Hermes 150 series. Well, winner there was Jad Dana on uh, last Sunday in the rain. We'll comment on that in a few moments' time. And there you see our top few there, Todd Minicus, having a very good start to the season, winning a WEF Challenge Cup already and finishing top three in that uh, 150 class. McLean Ward ever present in the top five and uh, Natalie Dean in fifth place after that and uh, last week's leading rider award now that's based on points from two big classes from the Grand Prix qualifier and the Grand Prix there and the highest points throughout the week was Australian rider Tyza Rowan and uh, it was a fantastic week too for Philip McGuane of Ireland making his debut on the Evergate horses into the big uh, five-star classes on a Saturday night Dara Kenny never too far away into the top three as well and they're completing our top five with Caitlin Connors and Natalie Dean once again so so let's talk about that Grand Prix as well from uh, last Saturday night, Southern Arches Grand Prix and a fantastic start to the season for Ben Mayer and uh, Anjou. Ben coming in on the back after the win in the uh, London World Cup qualifier just, well, a couple of weeks ago. A nine-year-old then, a ten-year-old now. And uh, Jacob, I mean, it was a pretty impressive performance for a man who could well be world number one come next month. Yeah, it was. Um, it was really exciting to watch too and uh, his jump off was... I mean, something to really pay attention to. I'd love to ride a jump off like that, so <laughs> it was great. Fantastic run for uh, Ben Mayer to complete that. And uh, then, as I mentioned on Sunday, it was a little bit damp around the edges. In fact, it was chucking it down with rain. Jad Dana, though, was the winner. Uh, once again, he's been picking up win after win here at the Winter Equestrian Festival and in the shows in the run-up before as well, of course, uh, teaming up with Leslie Howard there as well. Uh, not the easiest of conditions, Jacob, but he still pulled it out of the bag. Yeah, um, I actually did the class on Sunday as well. Um, and Jad, I feel like he's always kind of going for the win no matter what the class is. So um, to, for him to have you know those exciting horses and to be really kind of shining in these bigger FEI classes, I was happy for him. He's well, a good guy. Good talking rider. about shining the FEI classes, we're going to come on to you and Hannah now as well. Jacob, let's come to you first and take a little look at your round with, with Highway. It was four faults this time, but it's been a very good start to the season and a fantastic season last year, which we'll talk about. But we're going to have a little look at Saturday night. How, how did you feel about it? I was really happy with my round on Saturday. Um, you know, he jumped awesome, I thought, uh, on Thursday to qualify. And uh, in the jump off, I really went for it to the last jump and had a kind of big mistake. So I was worried he might be a little too high uh, on Saturday night, but I thought he went great. It was really rideable. The jump I had down, um, actually last year, I had to go first in my first ever yeah. Saturday night. And then this year, I went almost at the end, so I had a lot of time to watch, and I overthought the line I had down. <laughs> it looked like it was riding long for everybody. My horse has a big stride. I should have just thought, I know this horse, and I pushed too much, got there too deep, and he jumped up really well and just didn't finish behind. So I thought he went great the rest of the round, but my mistake in the middle. The difference is this year, last year, it was a straight draw for the Grand Prix. This I year, the went, Grand Prix draws yeah. are based on your... <laughs> Your, your result in the qualifier. Right. So if you do well, which you did. Yeah. Yeah. I had to go toward the end, which is usually an advantage, and it is, but I think I just overthought too much. But 
I was happy with my horse and he's ready for next week. Hannah, you've had time to suggest di digest your rounds uh, from uh, Saturday night as well. Uh, your thoughts on Cloud? It was a fantastic night once again. And it's been a wonderful partnership. How long has it been now? Uh, I think this marks a year. My first Saturday yeah. night was this time last year. It was a little bit of a surprise. Um, and this was much more relaxed. Yes. We've come off a break, so Cloud is fresh. We're just getting back in the ring after our tour in Europe on the team. So. The qualifier, he was great, um, kind of just getting a little bit of rust off, getting that ring ride and eye back, and he's just right there for me. So um, we'll jump this week and see. And, and give those that, that aren't aware a little bit of background on Cloud. Cloud is a horse from Mario Delorier, who is my coach, and he's just a, a great horse. We started our partnership last year, and He's just one of those horses that when you find your heart horse and you vibe, and this is that horse for me. Um, I think he'd try anything he could and jump anything. So he's just, he's a little quirky at home um, and in the warm up sometimes, <laughs> but in the ring, he, he just tries his best and is, is right there. Well, you had some fantastic results last year. Actually, you and Jacob teamed up on US teams, didn't you, in Portugal and Spain? We did. How yeah. did it go? <laughs> uh, we were great. We were really solid. Yeah, uh, we podium finished both times and mm -hmm. I got to know some pretty great people. So yeah. that was the first time Hannah and I got to know each other yeah. and uh, we rode on the team together and had some clear rounds and yeah, we brought home bronze both times. Two podium finishes. Yeah, it was great. And, and for you as an experience, how did you, how did you feel about it? I loved it. You know, I've had a bit of a gap from uh, the format and the team experience, I'd say, from young riders until doing the developing development Me tour too. with yeah. Jacob. So, um, but picked up right where it left off, and it was we just were so lucky to have such a great group that really, you know, bonded and and banded together and and fought for it. And and I'm thinking it's going to lead into big things this year. You've got to be pretty excited about it. Good results in, in Spruce mm -hmm. Meadows, of course. Terrific mm -hmm. rounds there. It's all touch wood. Touch wood. Going in the nice right direction. Yeah, just keep keep moving forward. <laughs> well, keep moving forward. It's fantastic rounds from you. Jeffrey, Thank you. let's talk hunters uh, let's. from that point of view. Now, you before have been winner of the Hunter Spectacular on a Saturday night. I have. What was that like? And give us a little bit of background to that one, because we were talking about this earlier. It was, it was quite a sort of last minute thing. Uh, it was. Um, that was a night I'll remember forever. Um, most of the Hunter Spectaculars, I have to say, are very different for me. I normally am helping a lot of my students and other horses in the class. Um, and the year I won, actually, it was just me. So it was a much different experience, but I think it might have worked out better for me in the end, because I was really able to focus on kind of take my time in the warm up and um, you know, make sure he was relaxed before I went in and uh, really have an, a solid plan, so yeah. We're seeing a few shots here of, of drum, roll, drum roll and sandstone and a few others that horses, but drum roll has been uh, really the one coming out to big fanfare last season from that point of view. Give us a yes. few of the highlights. Uh, drum roll, I, yeah, I don't have enough good things to say about him. He's amazing. Um, we started our career on a, on a high. Uh, we were lucky enough to purchase him from Mary Jane King uh, and Kelly Mullen. And uh, he's basically done nothing but win in the Green 3-9 and Junior Hunter Division with his owner. And I've been lucky enough to win another Hunter Spectacular with him in Michigan, um, as well as derbies, classics, all sorts of stuff. So I don't have enough good things to say about him. Harrisburg was a big, big one for you, wasn't it? It was. It was. It was a huge, huge accolade for me. It was. It's been a goal of mine to be leading hunter rider at a championship like that. But uh, I thought it would be much further down the road. So I, I'm forever grateful for him. We, for we're seeing a little of drum roll there. What's What's yeah. made drum roll so special? Uh, drum roll is. He's actually not like a lot of my other hunters. I would say he's very big and um, he's. A little stiff to ride, but I think the reason he's so successful is he's very, very brave. Um, there's nothing he would ever spook at, and I just think he has more scope than most hunters really do. He could jump any jump, any height, um, so I think it makes all of it really easy for him. 
And so how does that make you feel coming in here this season? Uh, it makes me feel really good. I'm very excited. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Yeah. Okay, we've got lots coming up uh, to talk about from Hunters because there was a big season this year. We've got some new additions as well, yeah. which we'll talk about in a few minutes' time. Um, but all three of you have had a big year last year, 2023. We're already uh, hurtling into 2024. Um, what did last year teach you? Let's start with Hannah. Um, last year it just taught me to keep going. I mean, starting week one, I was a little petrified, I think, to go into the night class, uh, my first real week with Cloud, but Mario encouraged us and believed in us and our whole team with Dale and, and Lucy, Deloria and everyone. So, and it just kept rolling. So we started to vibe and, um, then got the opportunity in, in Calgary. The goal was to jump the meter 50s well in hopes to get put on a team later in the year. And then we just kept going and yeah. ended up jumping our first five star Grand Prix and the Queen's Cup. So those are some pretty big things. Um, and you just gotta, you know, fence by fence, step by step, go around the course and then you just build and it's done. It's it's working. It's working. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, really just trust, believe in yourself, trust yourself and trust your horse. And it's taught me to kind of surrender more and, and the better that horse jumps for me. So it's a nice feeling. Wonderful. Jacob, from your point of view, 2023, what did we take out of that? Um, yeah, that was a big year for me, for sure. Uh, one I'll probably never forget. Um, I would say I definitely learned to trust the process, you know, um, I was a little unsure when we bought Highway, you know, I, I thought he was going to be a great horse. I didn't know that he was going to turn out to be this spectacular. Um, but to really trust the process, I think, is what I've learned. You know, I bought him. We kind of started slow. I did some meter 30s, meter 40s, did a National Grand Prix, um, you know, then progressed to a three star, then a four star, then a five star. We jumped the Gold Cup. Um, got to do some Nations Cup teams. So, you know, I think definitely not rushing and, um, you know, to just trust your horse and trust kind of the natural progression that uh, you two as a team can can come to, so. Great, and Jeffrey, from your point of view, 2023, what, what was your big, big takeaway from there? How do you think, what did it teach you? Um, I feel like in our lifestyle, it's very easy to like, always want more or think about the next thing, bigger, better. And I think with my year, I was really able to like enjoy it um, and kind of know that what I have, I'm really lucky for. And I was able to kind of stop and actually enjoy what was happening and like cross a lot of goals off my list. So um, I don't know, it was a I was able to not like feel like I always have to get to the next thing or be worried about like, oh, the next round, the next this, so uh, yeah. It was nice to like slow down a little bit. You, you were able to take it in. Yeah. Yeah. I think you all had an enjoyable year, didn't you? Yeah. We did. Yeah. Perfect. Let's get 2024 well underway. <laughs> let's get it going. Um, and let's talk a little for those those at home as well. We, we're talking hunters. We're talking jumpers here. Um, what do you guys think is is the transition between the two? What do we think we learned, Jeffrey? Because you've done jumpers as well. I mean, what, what do we learn in the hunter ring that benefits there? We've talked a little bit about you know how different things can can benefit. Um. I think both the equitation and hunters, I think it just really teaches you discipline and there's a poise and art form about it um, that personally I think can be applied to the jumpers. I think obviously there's not a judge element, but um, I think the most winningest jumper riders do it in beautiful style and perf in perfect form. Um, and I think that's really comparable. Speaking of think. beautiful style, what do you make of that? Between the hunters and the jumpers? Um, yeah. Well, when I think of my perfect ring rhythm with Cloud, uh, I visualize coming in for a hunter derby. Something soft, it gets me a little bit relaxed. It gets me present, dialed into my horse, not thinking about, you know, five jumps ahead. And yeah. then you hit that rhythm and everything comes up right. Now, I'm probably not quite as finessed as our <laughs> hunter riders here to get the job done. But Cloud isn't a hunter, so. Um, yeah. But that that I think you know transfers. You give yourself some credit too. Like, uh, yeah. I am so smooth. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. It's nice. Thank you. Jacob, you're you're the person that sits between the two because I think in Traverse City this year you won a Hunter Derby and a Grand Prix on the same weekend. In fact, the same day I think wasn't it? It was the same day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I do a lot of 
both. You know, I feel like I'm starting to focus a lot more on jumpers. Um, but I will say, I think, you know, the best jumper rounds, the best jump offs, the mm -hmm. clean rounds are usually the smoothest. I mean, you'll definitely have every once in a while someone that comes in and is rough and all this stuff have a clear round and win. But for the most part, I think the fastest, smoothest, clearest rounds are usually smooth. Yeah. Um, and I always think, oh, I had that down. I should have been smoother through the turn. Oh, I, I didn't jump that quite right. I could have done one less stride. It could have been smoother. So it makes me think back sometimes to hunters and equitation, you know, leaving it out in this line, mm -hmm. cutting the turn, not cutting the turn, trying to make it smooth. Um, and I think about that all the time when I'm jumping big jumps and um, trying to have clear rounds and go fast. You know, it com comes back to the hunter smoothness. What, what goes through your mind, so Hannah, first when you're jumping like on Saturday night? Saturday night? Well, this, this Saturday night was more I just wanted to, to jump a competitive round. Um, you know, some nights maybe when it's a little bigger, you want to survive depending who you're <laughs> yeah. on. Um, and, you know, a lot of, now, you know, now it's more the nerves come from wanting to execute it well and be competitive, yeah. not just survive. Where some of my past rounds were maybe just surviving. Yeah. So. That's, that's in there. You're definitely <laughs> thriving now. We're thriving. <laughs> We're thriving. Yes. Jeffrey, from your point of view, let, let's take that, that Grand Hunter Champion win in uh, Penn <laughs> National. What was going through your mind? Um, you know, I, well, drum roll specifically, I think he's so talented naturally. So honestly, most of the time I show him, I try to think, okay, don't mess up, don't get in his way, because <laughs> uh, obviously he can do it perfectly so uh, most of the time I just try to stay out of his way and let him do his job because he knows how to do it very well. It's because it's been set up well. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, from your point of view, um, Hunters this season, Winter Equestrian Festival is, is one of the biggest in, in terms yeah. of length, in terms of prize money, yeah. of everything that goes on here. Uh, what can we expect from you? Tell us a few of your horses and who else have we got out there to keep an eye on this season? Uh, well, obviously, Drumroll, uh, yeah. he's a great horse of mine, and yeah, I have a few exciting horses. Uh, Juan Carlos is a new addition to me that I'm excited about. Uh, I purchased a horse from Canada that hopefully will be a competitive first-year horse. Um, so yeah, I have, a good, I have a good string, I'm excited. And who else is there is sort of pushing you from that point of view, riders and horses? Who, who are you looking over your shoulder at? Um, I mean, obviously, like Jacob, and I think riders like Troy Colvin, I always watch out for. Um, personally, my favorite horse right now is Jenny Hannon has a first-year horse, and his name is Frosted, and I think he is one of the most talented horses for the year. So okay. I think he's the one to watch out for. Okay, so we'll get to the rings and go watch that one. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Jacob, uh, you're going to be doing a bit of both this season? Yeah, I <laughs> think I definitely will be. Um, who do we look out for? Yeah, I would agree. Jeffrey always, you know, he has won a lot with drum roll. Um, he beat me in at the National Horse Show. <laughs> I was second. Um, but I also think that John French, you know, has really kind of come from California in the past few years and has built a really good string of, um, I would say, like scopey, capable, derby type horses. You know, he won derby finals. Um, and I think he has a lot of really, obviously, nice horses that I think will be winning a lot in the Hunters. Because that one's really interesting, because he and Kent Farrington have teamed it's up. It's a good team, yeah, yeah. I would say. Very and good team. I think not just training-wise, but also horse sourcing, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think many videos go uh, by Kent, you know? If it's mm -hmm. good, it's, he's going to get it. <laughs> Well, lots to look out for there. Good luck. Um, Hannah, Thank let's you. talk um, your career, which, yeah. is, which is going in that direction right now. Um, who've been the big influences on you? Uh, in my junior years, I rode with Karen Healy. Uh, she was a big influence through the equitation and uh, up into Young Riders. Uh, had some influence from Leslie Howard. Um, and now we're with Mario, and we've been with him over a year, I'd say, yeah. and um, it's a great fit. I have some really solid, or I have really solid basics, and now it's just getting that five-star finesse at the upper level that I've not had the opportunity. So it's helpful to have the horse and the right team. Was it always gonna be horses? For me, yes. Yeah. As when I finished, well, when I finished university, I worked in PR for a year, and then after that, 
turned professional, worked for, for Karen, and was a working student for uh, some people here, my first WEF, and yeah, I've just gone on from there. But for you, it's it's been horses in the family entrenched all the way through, and pretty much, yeah. Dad doing Western movies. My yeah. mom learned to ride when I did at Foxfield, and yeah, it's been been quite horsey. It's been great bringing up coming up through that yes. from that point of view. Yes. And and from all of that that's come in, but you've you've had other talents. You've you've gone through dance. You've gone through all yes, yes, <laughs> lots of dance. When I was younger, I had to choose if I wanted to be very good at one, either go to ballet school or choose the riding. That was when I was still at Foxfield, so maybe like 12 years old, yeah. and I chose the horses yeah. because I love the animals, and then, you know, I think we all love the competition and, <laughs> and that, that rush. Well, from mum and dad's point of view, who was the more disappointed? Because your mum performed in Cats and, and on stage in the West End. Uh, they, were, <laughs> they were just happy I found what I love. Yeah. So as they did in their fields, they are they are happy yeah. that I chose that. And and that's been hugely successful. And, and go on and go on and, and, and your own career, which has been great. Yeah. Uh, for you, we've got much more coming up in the next few weeks, okay. which we're looking forward to. Um, Jacob, let's talk about um, Highway. OK. Give me a little bit of background on, on Highway. We've seen Highway competing now. Where did the horse come from? Where is it? Where is it? progress to yeah so highway uh he came from germany max nieberg um was showing him over there uh up to i think three stars he came over to the states and was with diego vivero uh, a guy from south america who actually helps uh tani and uh rupert winkleman uh and i got to know them a little bit i tried highway i guess it was 2020 two it must have been yet yeah, because I've had him a year and a half um, and he was showing down here a little bit but not very much um, and we kind of bought him and just hit the ground running like I said we took it slow but um, I thought maybe he'd jump like some two and three stars with me I didn't think I'd jump the biggest tracks at major league and get on these nation's cup teams so it's been a great horse for me and um, He's really fun in the barn, too, and he's a real character. So. What, what's his character like? Um, he has two white eyes, which <laughs> is a little like horse people know. <laughs> the horses with white eyes are a little quirky. Um, he's funny in the barn. Uh, I always say Nick, who works with me, um, the first few times he rode him, because he'll flat him sometimes, I was like, don't let your guard down. You know, he, <laughs> he never is malicious, but he spooks and is funny and... Um, you just got to be on your A-game every time you ride him. There's no loopy rain trail rides going on with Highway. <laughs> but, um, he's a really fun horse, and um, he really gives you a feeling like you could jump anything and go fast and clear rounds, and he's just a, a real competitor. The most talented have usually got their quirks. Yes, from that that's point true. <laughs> that's true. Cloud, Cloud what's, what's he like? On the daily, yeah. Um, some days is a cloud day where he <laughs> um, just puts his head up and won't turn to the left or really anyway, and just goes. <laughs> um, so those days just sometimes are there, and you let him do his thing. Um, but he he always is is safe. He's not very spooky, and he wants to do the right thing. Which is great. So and in the ring, he always does. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, right, we've got some questions for you, uh, for all three of you. Jeffrey, we're going to start with you, uh, bringing you into these. And okay, first one up is going to be for Jeffrey, and let's take a look at who it came from as well. Because the good thing is, each week you're sending in questions on our uh, WEF International Instagram as well. Here we go from Lauren Reicher. If you could ride another top riders hunter, which would you pick, Jeffrey? That's a good question. I have always wanted to ride. Hunt Tosh's horse, Cannon Creek. Why? Um, I think he has a lot of similar qualities to Drumroll, and I think um, similarly Scopey, Big Stride, um, I, I think we would get along quite well. Okay, so there could be more ribbons with that one. I would hope. Okay, I'm not sure you're going to get it, but <laughs> yes. Okay, let's go to your second question uh, that's come in for Jeffrey as well, and let's take a look at what's come in, and this has come from Lily. What have we got? for our next question, and it is, um, why do you mainly focus on hunters? I think we've covered some of this a little bit. Yeah. Give us um, the insight. 
I actually used, when I started my business, I only had jumpers. Yeah. Um, so they were actually the main focus. And then I had a pretty serious injury at the Hampton Classic where I broke my leg. Um, and it was just sort of happenstance when I came back from that injury, my supporters and clients at the time were heavily hunter based. So that was sort of uh, the direction it sort of went. And here we are. Any, but any thoughts of going back towards colored poles at any I point? I was just going to say, it is uh, <laughs> a New Year's resolution of mine to yep. get back in the jumper ring, and uh, I'm excited to do so. Jacob, watch out. <laughs> He's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and a third question for you, Jeffrey, has come from Horse Girl Diaries, and let's just have a little look at what that is. Our third question for you looks like this. Who was your first trainer, and when did you start riding? Back to the start. Um, I started riding a little late, uh, probably 15 or 16 years ago at this point. And um, I started riding with Don Stewart and Debbie Farmer Hill. Yeah. Yep, from yeah. the ponies. So, yeah. Exciting times. Yeah. Brilliant. Good. How old are you then? 27. <laughs> how old are you then? Oh, how old was I then? <laughs> um, I was uh, 11 years old. You were 11 years mm -hmm. old. Good. Okay, Hannah, your yes. turn. Up you come. Let's take a look at uh, Hannah's questions. The first of those that have been sent in for Hannah. We had lots of questions for Hannah, but these are the ones we picked out. When did you decide to ride 100% of your time? After my PR gig in 2011, 2012. Yeah. I never really stopped um, until then. That was the first time I only rode on the weekends. And then, um, you know, then it was time to work and do it. Yeah, and it's gone quite well. Mm -hmm. It's gone very well. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the second question for uh, Hannah. And uh, this will be from Ashley Stapleton. Let's have a look at what we've got as our uh, second question for Hannah's three. And is, what is your favorite way to warm up cloud? We've touched on this oh. a little bit. So clouds um, show warm up. Uh, I don't flat him the day of the class. He goes for a nice little trot on the line. We let his nose reach on the ground as long as the, the facility is nice. And then we get on at the ring and trot around and then start jumping. If we canter before we jump, he can be a little silly. But he has his So routine. we save the power. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. OK, third question for Hannah. Let's take a look. And it's what piece of advice uh, you'd give to a young rider wanting to be into Grand Prix? Uh, I would say just be a student of the sport. Study any rider that you want to emulate. Watch them warm up, watch them on the ground, and really study everything from the ground up, everything about your horse, knowing how to take care of it in the barn, uh, knowing all the vet work. Just immerse yourself and really be a student of everything because it all goes in the mix and you don't know when you'll need it. Who did you, who's your biggest one to watch? Probably oh, now. that I like? Well, uh, in the All class on Saturday, it was great that we had Kent, Ben, and McLean, yeah. the pre-qualified. So that was really nice to watch those rounds. Yeah, three perfect rounds. Yeah, right to, to, <laughs> to, yeah. to see. And then I, I stopped watching except for my teammates. I yep. came up and watched them. Excellent. You've got that. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, Jacob, your three. Uh, first of those for Jacob Pope. Uh, looks like this. Um, something you'd tell your younger self? Uh, you know, I think I would say it's a marathon, not a sprint. I know that that's a little cliche, but, you know, I, I would keep saying, you know, I'm 15, I want to be doing the Big Act. I'm 18, I want to be jumping Grand Prix. I'm 25, why haven't I jumped a five star yet? You know, and it just, I'm not even 30, and I feel like I've accomplished a lot of things that I kept thinking as a younger kid like why haven't I done this yet why haven't I done this yet and what's nice about our sport is we can do this until we're pretty old <laughs> so you know yeah. I've got many years left hopefully um, so to just you know keep plugging along and um, you know good people uh, come your way and help you out along the way which I've been really lucky with so um, just kind of keep chugging along and yeah it's not a race. <laughs> it's not a race. John Whitaker was Until winning classes off. at London at 68. Right, so, yeah. exactly. Right. exactly. Might even be 69 now. OK, let's take a second question. And how did you get to the top level of show and compete all across the group? How did you get there, Jacob? You know, I, I really kind of have come up through the pipeline, I would say, that's kind of put in place by our governing bodies. You know, I rode in schooling shows until I was, honestly, I don't know, 
14 or 15, I never jumped three foot six junior hunters. I never did regular ponies. You know, I did equitation my last junior year. Um, but I kind of did all these grassroots programs. I did the Emerging Athletes program, um, which uh, I ended up winning and gave me a little spotlight to get a working student position with Andre. Um, and kind of along the way have just taken every opportunity presented. Um, Judy Richter, who helped Andre, helped me. Uh, she gave me my first Grand Prix horse. Um, we did Young Riders together uh, and kind of just kept going in that natural progression um, and basically took every opportunity and program that was offered to us yeah. and took advantage of it. Excellent. Good. Thank you for those. Um, we're going to talk uh, the final part of Hunters with Jeffrey. We're going to take a look at uh, some of the events that are coming up for us in the next few uh, weeks, months, however you want to timeline it. Uh, let's go with weeks. It sounds better. And uh, <laughs> let's have a look at what's coming up. So some new initiatives yeah. this year, Jeffrey, as well. So let's take a look at a few of those. And you'll be taking full advantage of those. Everything from the team classes, of course, to the Hunter Spectacular. Seven-year-old, three, three young hunters. Six-year-old, got plenty for the young horses this year. Yeah. That's a big help. It is. It's very nice. Uh, 100,000 uh, spectacular for teams this time as well, which is going to be fun. Uh, young Hunter, five-year-olds in there, as say, from the uh, Young Horse ranks. Hunter Derby's over on the Derby field. And, of course, uh, we can't go far without the uh, World Championship Hunter Night on week six. Yeah. Um, let's talk a couple of those. Um, away from the traditional, we've got a team competition this year. Yeah, um, it's... Uh really cool it looks amazing um, I think Andrew Lustig is sort of helping direct that um, I, I've never done a team event like that but you need one professional one junior and one amateur rider um, and I think it's a I think it's a cool thing I think it's neat and kind of fun and different different for us and you're gonna be Friday night <coughs> yeah uh, coming up on week I also five think it's a very good uh, opportunity to get in the ring before week six. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, week six, from that point of view, of course, is the Hunter Spectacular. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts on that this year? Um, I always, I am a very high-strung person by nature, <laughs> so week six is not easy on me. I don't think I sleep at all. But um, I am lucky enough I have a, a few buys this year for the night class, so I personally do not have to worry about qualifying. So I think just um, making sure my students have a good week and hopefully they can get in there with me and uh, maybe we can do it again. Absolutely. And yeah. as we mentioned in there, obviously some young horse classes now more for the hunters yeah. as well. Um, that helps things along? It does. I think there's a lot of uh, programs and divisions to bring horses along nowadays, which is nice. Um, I, think, I think the young hunters allow greener horses um, to not always have to compete against like the pre-green horses which maybe they aren't ready yet or maybe they're not at the same level experienced i think the pre-green divisions can be quite quite competitive especially here so yeah excellent looking forward to all of that yeah well um that about wraps things up um just to remains to say thank you very much to my guest this week jacob pope yeah thanks uh, good luck this week you're going to be a in action this week uh next week next week you're star, going to yep. take a little breather this week and yeah. then back in here you got it. uh for the before star then yes from that point of view hannah you're going to be over on the turf I'll be on the grass this week. Looking forward to that. Good luck in the next few weeks Thank as you. well. Big few weeks coming up. And Jeffrey, you're just going to remain busy as ever and nervous about week six. Uh, <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, thank you very much. Thank you. And let's see what's coming up this week as well, because I say it is going to be a busy week overall. And so it's been a fantastic week uh, with all of last week uh, finishing well. And of course, this week, we're going to be heading into the $50,000 Palm Beach Equine Clinic Grand Prix. Uh, U25s also to uh, feature this week as well, sponsored by Brain Juice. That is going to be over on the grass. And uh, also completing on the grass on Sunday this time is the $140,000 Key Flow Feeds USA Grand Prix. And that is going to be on Sunday afternoon. Join us for all of that. Uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you to Dodd Technologies who will be bringing our streaming to you and uh, a whole list of this will bring you commentary as well. We'll see you then. Thank you to all on WEF Weekly this week. Thank you to my guests. We'll see you next week in the same spot.